Hi, I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. My channel is dedicated to helping victims of narcissistic abuse get free and stay free. Many of us have kicked our own asses uh, wondering how could we have stayed in such a horribly abusive relationship? How could we actually be feeling love for someone who's so horrible to us? Now, I received some information recently from our beloved Deb J. And I think the information that Deb sent really does answer this question. And I want to talk about that today. The information that Deb sent starts out by explaining how a rat behaves in a laboratory. So the rat is in his cage and he has a little lever to release pellets. So every time he hits a lever, a pellet is released. And he seems to be doing just fine with this system. So the scientists decide to take away the pellets and see what happens. Well, again, the little rat is hitting the lever and nothing is coming out. Well, this consistency, too, um, sits well with him. He's able to carry on quite normally in his daily routine though nothing is coming out. First, he had the consistency of steady pellets. Then he had the consistency of no pellets. And either way, the rat seemed to do fine. So the scientists decide to release pellets intermittently in a random sort of order. So every now and then, when he hit the lever, something did come out. Now, this inconsistency this not knowing, this anticipation, this random reward doesn't sit well with the rat. The rat loses his mind. He stops grooming. His health deteriorates. He becomes obsessed. He becomes addicted to the lever. He becomes addicted to the random intermittent rewards. It is these random intermittent rewards that causes the rat to become absolutely obsessed to the point uh, of his own demise. Now, we see this very commonly in the addiction of gambling where you have no control, the reward is totally random, you are anticipating the reward, and it is this anticipation that keeps people gambling. Now, I looked into this quite a bit while I was still with Trevor, because Trevor was a horrendous gambler. I mean, Trevor would gamble every single dime he had, and throughout the gambling session, he could win large sums of money. He didn't walk away with those. Those went back in, in anticipation of that intermittent reward. As I watched Trevor gamble, and I would often sit there beside him trying to gently coax him out of the place, uh, I could see in his face that he was very, very responsive uh, to the intermittent reward system, the intermittent gratification. Even if he would gamble $5, but he would win $1, though that looked like a $4 loss to me. In his mind, he had achieved that intermittent reward and his face would change. He would almost look like he was elated by this loss. Though in his mind, it was a win. Trevor most definitely appeared addicted. He appeared to be suffering all the symptoms of any other addiction, be it drug addiction, alcoholism, sex addictions, the highs, the lows, the ups, the downs, that glazed over look in his eyes, the obsessive compulsive drive to continue trying to achieve this intermittent reward. Now, this is really quite an abusive uh, form of mind control and manipulation when you think about it. And I could see that Trevor was absolutely being manipulated by this process, by this system of intermittent rewards. But oddly, I could not see at the time that Trevor was inflicting me with the same form of abuse, the intermittent reward system, where you had no idea what you could expect though I was very, very eager to gain his approval, uh, gain that reward, I simply could not see that I too was addicted to gambling.
didn't recognize at the time that I was not by any means involved in a relationship. A relationship is a steady give and take situation where two people are putting each other's needs of equal value to create that stability, that steady release of the little pellet. Now, I could see that Trevor was being dragged by this thing, but I didn't recognize that he was in a very calculated a very methodical way, inflicting the exact same abuse on me. And as he would become frenzied and just shoving in more money and shoving in more money, I too was becoming extremely, you know, frenzied in my addiction, trying to get that release of chemicals, trying to get that feel good chemical, you know, happening in my life, trying to gain approval, trying to feel better about things. So in many, many ways, I was watching his addiction while sitting in my own addiction. Now, addiction is not a relationship. I was not in a relationship with Trevor any more than Trevor was involved in a relationship with the gambling machine. Today, <laughs> 10, 11 months away from the evil thing, I can clearly see that uh, that was not love. That was not a relationship. That was addiction. That was absolutely well-planned out, calculated mind control being inflicted on me, thus causing an addiction that was very, very hard to break. Now, for any empath, it's going to be quite a struggle walking away from the beauty of what you see as a loving relationship. But I'll tell you, when you get jarred awake to the reality that you are actually involved in the filth of obsession, of uh, chemicals being released in your body, uh, you're now obsessed trying to just hit that lever and hit that lever, hoping for a pellet to drop out. There's something really dirty and disgusting about that, and it certainly tarnishes the original thought that you were involved in something beautiful. In addition to the utter filth of obsessive compulsive type addictions like gambling, we're dealing with something a thousandfold worse than this, in my opinion, because even if there was a way to get the pellets coming out steadily, we're still dealing with someone who's absolutely incapable of loving us. And I believe it's at the core of our human needs to be able to offer love freely and be loved in return. So we'll be in a loveless situation forever if you decide to stay. Uh, this partner, this thing, has no empathy, no compassion. So we're never going to receive the kindness and, you know, gentle exchange of feelings that we desperately need. Now, if that pot of crap isn't bad enough, chuck in some lying, chuck in some infidelity, thieving, and a genuine envy for you that will drive them to absolutely destroy you. I think it's one thing to really struggle with the reality that you have to leave a relationship, but I think it's something altogether different and really quite liberating when you recognize that this is not a relationship absolutely not a relationship. This is not an exchange of love. This is not a bonding of two human beings. This is entrapment. This is enslavement. This is victims, targets being taken hostage to be used. These creatures want your identity. They want your soul. They want your money. They want your sense of well-being. They want your sense of happiness and joy. They want to absolutely suck like vampires until there is nothing, nothing left of us. When the absolute best we can hope for is the random intermittent pellet uh, from someone who is incapable of love, kindness, or empathy, whose truest desire is to harm and injure you, holy crap, man, we are in a lose-lose situation. Leaving truly is the only option. If you're struggling to get out, it is because your mind, your spirit, your soul is heavily burdened by this feeling of hopelessness. And this feeling of hopelessness isn't real. This is a product of mind control. If you are out for the love of God, stay out.
evidence shows that it takes 90 days to break a habit. So really, if you're still feeling this obsession towards an arc, you're only three months out from changing it. I'm Kim. You're watching Kim Wilson TV. I hope you guys are having a great NARC-free day.